Hey guys, how you doing? It's me, Alan here at LFC Red Chat. Um, follow me on Twitter at LFC Red Chat, and you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel if you click either up here or it's down here somewhere, depending on where you're viewing it. Um, and you can uh, follow along with the videos if you like them. This is the much belated or uh, the late Crystal Palace video. I finally got a chance to sit down and watch it today because I've been in. Um, I live here in DC. I've been snowed in, so I've been out shoveling snow and in all sorts today already. So this is me finally getting a chance to sit down and watch the full match and come up with my own opinions on the game. Uh, also, just after this video, I'm also going to do the post match comments as well from Brendan Rogers. Um, so that video will be coming up straight after this one goes up as well. So, let's get stuck in. Five things that we learned. Uh, referee, stats, man of the match. And we'll, we'll have a brief look ahead to the next couple of games. Okay, so, number one thing that we learned. Palace goal. So, unfortunately, because I didn't get to see the game live, because I wouldn't go and pay the extra money for the Fox Soccer Plus channel out here in the States that you only really get to see the SPFL anyway on it or, you know, like Australian A-League and shit like that. I wasn't going to fork out for it. So for the first time all season, uh, I didn't have a Liverpool game televised live. So I tried my best to keep away from it, trying to, to bring on other people's opinions, tried to keep it with my own opinion. So I heard that a lot of people... Michael and the fucking knob that he is, and and others were saying that that Emery Shan for the goal was out of place. He should have should have done this. He should have done that. Should have tracked the, the run of Gale. Okay, I see. This is how I see it. I see Emery Shan seeing Gale. Gale runs behind uh, Emery. He runs in behind um, Skirtle. So for me, I can see, you know, Dwight Gale. And I can see Emery um, Skirtle, okay, Martin Skirtle, for a ball that's in the air. Now for me, I'm leaving that to Skirtle. Like I've said in a couple other videos, I think Skirtle is really coming into his own in this back three because there's a lot less indecision uh, when he has to go up and head to the ball. Like um, when, when Lovren was there in the back four, it, was, it wasn't clear enough who was going to come for the ball, who wasn't going to come for the ball. So Emery Shan is allowed... Gale to run in behind, um, allowed him to be taken over by, by Skirtle with all, you know, confidence that Skirtle was going to be able to clear the ball. Unfortunately, he doesn't clear it well enough. Mignoli has to parry it out, and he does well to, to fend off the first effort from Gale, but it's followed up afterwards. I, I can't possibly blame that in Emery Shan. It's just unlucky the way the ball fell, the way that, that um, Skirtle was off balance going up for the header. Nine times out of ten, Skirtle was going to win a headed duel against um, little Dwight Gale. Okay, so for for them to criticise Emery Shan, who who's still playing out of position at the end of the day, is a bit is a bit naive. It's almost like um, you know the shock jock kind of stuff, you know, on the radio and stuff like that. Just coming on, saying something knee jerk reaction so that people talk about, it, people write about it, and all the rest of it is really what what I think those guys were doing. Number two, penalty claim in the first half. Sturridge, well, what, what more do you need to, need to get done to you to, to get a penalty? Do, do you need to be stamped on or, or what is it? The ball comes in, the ball is in front of Sturridge, the boy comes in from behind, drags his feet out from under him, Sturridge falls down. I don't know, I don't know how that's not a, not a penalty for a big Bobby, what was his name, Bobby, Bobby Madley. Apparently that was the first time he ever uh, refereed a Liverpool match, and I said this in the preview. I, I hate why the FA Cup are bringing up these these lower league referees to to do a game like this. This should have been a Premier League referee that should have that should have looked over this game, that should have ref this game. Two Premier League teams needs a needs a high class referee. You know where where were all the other fucking knobs? But that that shouldn't be a penalty for Sturridge. Anyway, we'll move on. Number three, what a ball from Jordan Henderson. And Jordan Henderson was everywhere in that game. Um, everywhere in that, I was going to say yesterday, but it wasn't yesterday. He was everywhere in that game. Um, whatever day it was, Saturday? Saturday, Saturday it was. He was all over the place in that game Saturday. Like a true captain, everywhere and anywhere. 
Uh, but what a ball into Sturridge and, and the difference between Sturridge and maybe a Sterling, a Coutinho or someone else getting onto that ball. First of all, they probably wouldn't have made that run. But second of all, what a clinical finish, something that we've been missing. If that was a, an early season, uh, Coutinho early season, Balotelli maybe early season, uh, Sterling, maybe that hits the goalkeeper and it uh, doesn't go in. You know, you don't get the rub of the green. But with Sturridge, just a clinical finish. Well, what a what a volley onto his left foot. Oh, awesome. Awesome it was. It was really good to see. And uh, something that Liverpool fans have really been crying out for for, for the last, or well, for that, that time that he was out. Number four. Uh, number four is in relation to the second goal. It's good to see that Liverpool are learning, is what I wrote down in my notes. Because if you if you watch the goal again, you'll see that when Balotelli starts his run to hit the ball, uh, Lallana also starts his run to come across the box to pick up any scraps. A la what happened with Harry Kane in their offside goal against Tottenham to make it 2-2 in that game. How, how Harry Kane was ready there to pick up the scraps and then put it back across the box. If the ball comes out and deflects back out the way towards Lallana, I'm sure Lallana puts it back across the, the face of the goal for someone else to tap in. I believe Markovic was in there as well. But fortunately enough, it spills forward for Lallana just to knock it in himself. So, so well done. I think that, that must have came from, that was worked on the training, the training pitch, and must have came from seeing what Harry Kane did uh, against Liverpool. Not saying that you know that this is new. This is the 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 greatest thing since sliced bread. It's probably something just a little bit forgotten about. Put in the back of your head. You haven't seen it for a little while. It comes up again. You see it. You go. You know what? We're going to do that as well. Uh, we we got caught out with that, so we're going to catch someone else out with that. So they they did that. And I think it was really good, really um really good from Brendan to to set that up. Number five. Last thing. Mignolet. Some fantastic shots again. You know he was always a great shot stopper. He's coming out, he's still demanding his box. I'm going to say it almost every video now because I slate them when he, when he was going through his slump. But he's like a different goalkeeper now and you don't hear anybody clambering for a new goalkeeper uh, at the moment. At least at number one, you know he definitely need a backup at number two. But apart from that, I thought Pignoli was fantastic. Uh, referee, like I said, Robert Manley, fucking three out of ten, four out of ten. Awful, awful, just not up to the task, just not good enough. Too easily bowled over on decisions and, and the rest of it. I thought it was very, very poor. Stats. Liverpool had 66% of the possession away from home. Fucking hell, Crystal Palace. 34% for them. Liverpool had 22 shots. Palace had 10. Uh, Liverpool had 7 on target. Palace had 4. And uh, Liverpool had 4 corners compared to Palace's 10. If you were keeping track of that for your bets. Man of the match. Henderson for me. I thought he was everywhere and anywhere and... and Putting in a fantastic shift. I thought he'd done really, really well. Um, Captain Waiting. Um, I, I hope he does come that. A lot of people are misinterpreting one of my articles that I put up about Emery Shan. It was really taken from Pascal's comments that Emery Shan could be a captain of the future. Um, so, you know, four, five, six, seven years down the line, maybe Emery Can is the captain of Liverpool. But I think Henderson is the front runner at the moment to become a captain after Gerrard and I think he, he works the position really well. Next up coming games Bixiktas, then Southampton, then Bixiktas again. A good run of very, very important games uh, to see how we are gonna try and qualify for the Champions League uh, next season. You know the Southampton game is very important. You need to beat people that are in the top four already to be in the top four. Um, and then Bixiktas in the Europa League if you want to get through that that back door into the Champions League by winning the Europa League yeah, we can do it that way as well so it will be interesting to see the kind of teams that we field that we put out especially for the first Bixiktas tie uh, coming up on Thursday and I'll be having the, the preview video going up tomorrow as well uh, or today even and then how, how we're going to work in the Southampton and the quick turnaround again for Bixiktas uh, but that that's all in due course. That will come eventually. But just a very very good game. Getting getting the job done against Crystal Palace. Moving on, um, very good result in the draw as well. Getting Blackburn and Man United drawing Arsenal, which will be fantastic because one of them will get knocked out. And then you've got lesser opponents like West Brom and and Villa are still in there and um, uh, Bradford and who else is that? Who did Bradford play? I mm, can't remember, but it's not it's not any 
top four, top five sort of teams anymore. They've all been knocked out. So it's looking good. Um, and I'm, I'm just happy about the way Liverpool are playing right now. It's really, really good compared to how we were playing at the start of the season. I'm just over the moon with, with the way that we are playing just now. Have a good one, guys. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. I'm going to be bringing up more um, news, more discussion, stuff like that for you to comment. Uh, so make sure you add your comments down below to this video if you if you disagree or you agree with me. Uh, thumbs up the video if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't, of course. Subscribe either up here or down here, like I always say, and follow me on Twitter. I obviously Red Chat very active on there as well. If you want to have a good natter with me on there. All right, guys, have a good one. Stay safe as always, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Bye-bye.